We are live again in Studio Kitchen. Hey, welcome everyone. I'm here. We're going to be talking about the basics of meal prep, or just knowing and understanding the essentials when it comes to preparing a healthy, wholesome meal. Got a few options, which I'm going to go through in a second. I've got my computer in front of me here, which you can see. So any questions that you might have or comments during this live stream, go ahead, post them in the comments section, and uh, I'll jump on the computer every couple of minutes or so and uh, see what kind of questions are being asked. Before I get started, I want to share with you uh, the two most important options for today. We're going to be focusing on chicken or bison. So comment now, let me know if you want to see a chicken-based recipe or a bison or beef-based recipe, and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the chicken, so we will get started on that. Let's move the computer out of the way. So whilst we focus on our chicken, excellent source of lean protein, we'll put the beef to one side, I have a few other ingredients here in this bag. And I always like to think of my meals as sort of macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, as well as fiber, some sort of greens or rush. So a couple of options here. Uh, we've got an eggplant or aubergine, depending on where you are watching. Good old broccoli. Got an onion, avocado, and then carbohydrates, two options, either yam or sweet potato or brown rice. So we're gonna kind of pair these together and create a bit of a mix and match recipe. You know what, I'm thinking a bit of a throwback to sort of the competition prep. So we'll go with chicken, make use of the yams instead of the rice. Not too much difference in terms of actual carbohydrates per 100 grams. Uh, I just feel that the, the yam, the sweet potato, root vegetable, I'm able to assimilate, digest, and absorb, make use of those nutrients better than um, the rice. So we'll put that to one side, make use of that another time. Broccoli, we're gonna get started on this. Maybe we we'll use the uh, later. But I've got the oven set at uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're gonna make use of broccoli going in there and, uh, and get started on our meats. So first thing I'm gonna do is just prepare the broccoli to go in. First, I'm just going to break down all of the farts into bite-sized chunks. I'm going to put these into our bowl here. Let's pop up a few of our... Questions, there we go. If you haven't got any questions about uh, any of the food, uh, let me know where you're watching from in the world. Let me know how your weekend was, any plans, a workout. I'll kind of do a little food prep and I'll go through a few of the questions which I can see going on over there. So, uh, someone in the UK, broccoli, giving a bit of a haircut. Uh, and you cook steel, cook oats. We'll get to all of those questions later. For now, let's uh, make use of this. So the reason I'm breaking down the broccoli we're going to um, coat this in a little bit of oil. I'm going to bake this just to get that sort of crispy. Uh, I'll kind of make it a little bit more appetizing. We're not going to kill too much of the nutrients. I find that when I boil or pan fry, um, it off the edge and put it in the oven. It's just an easy way to get it cooked. Not that I cook everything, but broccoli is one of those foods that or you unlock more of the nutrients by cooking it rather than eating it raw. But for the most part, I'll kind of eat a lot of the vegetables, a lot of the salads and greens, 
um, peppers, uh, spinach, kale, most of those I'll eat raw or very lightly cooked. If you overcook them, we tend to drain them of their nutrients. What else? Well, uh, when I cook, I normally cook two or three meals at a time. It's just easier using larger ingredients than uh, always cooking one meal at a time. When it comes to food prep, breakfast, I often make that fresh in the morning. Lunch, that will be from the night before. So for dinner or supper, I'll often cook two or three uh, either meals or at least quantities of that same meal. So I'm only really cooking in the evening, making food for the next day. And then breakfast or shake post-workout while my lunch is already prepped. It's just an easy way to handle uh, all of your food. Make sure that you have enough food, whether it's in the fridge or you're taking it with you. And ultimately knowing what it is that you're putting in your body. So that's our broccoli pretty much done. Let's see a few more. Shout out from France. What kind of food should you eat to lower your cholesterol? Good question. We'll get onto that. Finger ligament gains. Yeah, we're doing a little hand workout here. Okay. Now, a lot of these, I guess, food prep techniques, very basic. Whether you think yourself a bit of a pro in the kitchen or not, just give it a go. A lot of my interest from uh, nutrition came from just competition prep, really understanding food the relationship with us and uh, the benefits that I get from understanding what goes in my body and how to go and prep it for it. Okay, so I'm going to use a little bit of uh, grapeseed oil in with the broccoli. I'm going to mix all of that in, add a little bit of flavor, which we'll use some um, uh, given salt, black pepper, mix it up with some garlic, granulated onion, and a little bit of rosemary and sea salt. So my goal with this particular I guess, recipe is to get close to equal protein and carbs amount. I want to have around about 40 grams of protein, give or take equal amounts of the carbohydrate, and fats will be a little bit from that chicken, a little bit from the avocado, I'll probably make it up about 15. So, keeping it really simple, this goes into the oven, 350 Fahrenheit, for about 15, 18 minutes, we're going to keep a check on it. It's just a really easy way to handle the vegetables, keep out of, uh, out of the way whilst we focus on our next setup, which for me, I'm going to use the, uh, the yams, sweet potatoes. Now, sweet potatoes and yams are technically different. The yams, which you'll see in a minute, a little bit more reddish on the inside, sweet potato, more yellow, both have about the same, I think it's about 28 grams of protein, carbohydrates per 100 grams, so nearly a third of that is carbohydrate-based. What I'm going to do is boil them, we're going to cut them, we're going to skin them, cube them, boil them, and I'm just going to... Get our pan. Okay, question here about broccoli. Uh, someone asked, tastes better eating it raw? Uh, does the vitamins be around when cooking it? Yeah, look, I, I, I often dip broccoli in with almond butter, peanut butter. Um, it's just when it comes to prepping it for my meal, I don't want to have it raw. I don't want to have it like that. Um, so by cooking it, um, gives it a little bit more of a crispier texture. I find it's easier to eat with this kind of meal. Plus I'm not boiling it, draining it all of the nutrients. So the nutrients are still there. And in some cases with certain uh, ingredients, vegetables, 
um, you can unlock or access more of the nutrients and um, fiber, all of the micronutrients in there as well by cooking them. So broccoli, I find, is one of them. Take you get raw, except with that nut butter. But as far as uh, including it as part of meal prep, I just I like to cook it. So water's going to boil in there with a pinch of salt. And then I'll make use of this pot still. Now I'm going to use a, a tail or carrot here, depending on where, where you were brought up and what you used to for. I'm going to skin the potato. I'm going to take the peel off it. Look how easy that is. Not for any other reason than it's just I find it easier to cook and for presentation as well. But as far as uh, nutrients, no real difference. I'd often keep the skin on if I'm baking it. I just find it easier. Plus, if you make mash out of it, uh, add a little mustard in there, which we might do as well. Just makes the whole consistency better. So quick and easy, take the skin off the potatoes. And then all I'm gonna do here is cube them. I'm gonna cut everything down, cube them into about one inch or half inch cubes. The benefit of this is twofold. One, I always found it easier to measure to keep track of the amount of yams. So 200 grams of cubed yams would give me about 50 Grams of carbohydrate, so it's just a really easy way to eyeball uh, portions. I used to weigh, it, now I'm just aware of it enough that I don't need to. But if this is still relatively new for you, sort of the whole food prep game, I would recommend having a set of scales and just weighing out the food, being aware of the quantity, the portions, and the size. Right, so look, here we go. I'm gonna cut this about a, a half inch thickness. Benefits of food prep, I find, is like I mentioned, being aware of quantities, the amounts, knowing where you're getting your protein from, your main source of carbohydrates, where you're getting your fat from. And just from having this understanding, I find at least it's easier to then make substitutions, switch out foods. I know that if I want to uh, change up my chicken for either fish or salmon, or trout beef, I have a better understanding of how much I need to be able to keep those macronutrients, the protein and fats constant, or if I want to start switching them around, changing out the types of carbohydrates, maybe for brown rice. But really is one of those things, the more you know, the more you understand, the better equipped you are at being able to make those changes and remain consistent with your intake. Certainly less than 10 pounds, maybe seven dollars worth. And uh been a half times I've gone to a restaurant and had close to or about the same quality type of food, and you pay three, four times more. So whether you like cooking or not, it's just good to understand sort of the, the cost per plate, if you like. That's how yam pretty much cut up. Doesn't all need to be perfect, but I want to show you what a 40 gram carbohydrate serving of potatoes look like. 
get this up. We'll go to grams. So yeah, it's about 100 grams per, or rather 27, say 30 grams of carbohydrates per 100 grams of yam. Really isn't a lot. I mean, if we can see in the plate there, to me, that's maybe two or three mouthfuls. So we'll go, I'm using the whole everything in here, but you start to get a, a sense of, uh, okay, that's 200 grams. So right there, that's what we would cook to get about 40 grams, a little bit more, maybe 55 grams of carbohydrates. So gives you an idea if you're overeating, if you're trying to lose weight, you might have a lot more yams, consuming a lot more carbohydrates. Just be aware of the actual macronutrient uh, proportion within that food. Like I said, we're gonna cook everything. Water has boiled. In they go. We'll add a little bit of seasoning later. Maybe 10 minutes, like I said, we'll end up hand frying them at the end after. Okay. He's doing nice. We'll give them a little shake and turn at the end. I'm going to jump over to the questions here. Interesting. Someone asking about a vegan diet. Um, interestingly enough, my girlfriend has kind of transitioned over to being vegan and uh, limited amount that we're getting in. Um, some great alternatives there. I've got my own thoughts and feelings. Um, so we'll do another video later on about that. But yeah, there's been many people, especially on social media that I've been following and aware of who have been on a vegan, whether it's been for uh, recent months or year, or they've always been that way. But their gains, their, their, their presence seems to be on the same quality as meat eaters. So um, I wouldn't let that impede your decision if you are vegan or thinking about going. The only thing I would say is you've got to be aware of the spectrum of amino acids. Um, what I mean by that is through meat, we get amino acids present in animal meats. Um, so the chicken, um, beef, bison, um, eggs, fish, we have a full spectrum. All of the building blocks that our body needs, all of those essential amino acids. When we cut meat out, we've really got to uh, mix and match our food. So legumes and um, beans and nuts will help combine those uh, range spectrum of amino acids so just be aware of that if you're cutting out meat make sure that you're getting optimal uh, amino acids from uh, combining different food sources but let's move on to our onion i'm just going to pan fry these and for this I might start crying on camera here just different ways to um, add additional texture flavor taste in there Sure, there are micronutrient benefits from adding stuff like this. For me, it just gives me a little bit more variety in my diet than, uh, than always just eating the same thing. You do find yourself in the kitchen often. Highly recommend getting yourself really great quality and sharp knife makes all the difference in uh, just your general food prep but also the experience when you're cooking uh, this knife a company called made in you may have seen them on tv now nice heavy weight trip nice balance um and it's been sharp from day one i haven't had to sharpen this since i've got it and i've had it over a year so great job 
also the pans over there made in really great quality love cooking with them okay so our onions taken care of what we do is actually mix these in with some of those uh sweet potatoes once i've pan fried them after the chicken Move on to our chicken and prep that. So I'm getting a little tearing up from those onions. So I mentioned we're using Trifecta, it's an organic meal prep company. Uh, obviously, you can get a la carte choices chicken, bison, um, venison, salmon, uh, Beyond Burgers now. Uh, as well as complete meals as well. So I've been with them for about a year and a half. Love using them, cook all their uh, a la carte options as well as their meals just when I'm on the go or haven't got time to cook. But their meats just make it really easy to cook with. They're already cooked. I'm just gonna slice them this way and reheat them once we've got everything else ready. Seasoned as well. Makes that whole food prep game that much more effective. So we looked at carbohydrates within our uh, yam. Yeah. What about protein within chicken? Chicken per 100 gram, which is about the size of that for basic chicken breast. That's kind of good for 100 grams. Uh, I believe it's about 27 grams of protein again. So to get our 40, 50 grams, that's medium-sized chicken breast, one and a half. So that's why I recommend whatever your, your kind of standard meal is each week, the types of foods that you cook, weigh it out. Uh, use a nutrition almanac. Uh, my nutrition book, Ultra Lean, also has a full breakdown of all of the protein, carbs, and fats within per 100 grams of uh, all of these different food options. And just be aware of the foods that you're having, the amount, how much protein and carbs and fats from the ingredients so that you can A, be consistent with it, and B, you can uh, change it up, switch up the different food groups uh, from time to time. So we'll keep our chicken for one side. So when we come on to cooking our yams, I'm going to use this big skillet. Turn that up. And what we're looking for with the, within the yam is to have it cooked just enough that it's basically you can squeeze it. It doesn't crumble and fall apart. It's not too firm. We want a smaller pan. Uh, we heat this up and cook it. It crisps the edges. Nutritional wise, it's not too much difference than if we just parboil it or even bake it. Again, this is just about taking out at this point. Okay, whilst I'm waiting for these to finish up, I want to ask you guys a question. What would be your go-to post-workout meal? So you have a killer workout, training arms, chest, 
combination. Let's say you have your protein shake. I use Blue Star, they are so smooth, it's delicious. But then your next main solid meal after that, what would you take? What protein, what carbohydrate, let me know your thoughts, comment. Uh, I wanna see what the sort of general consensus is for the best post-workout meal. Do you have white rice, do you have potatoes, do you max carbohydrates, what kind of protein do you have? I've got my thoughts as well, which I'll share with you after. But let's get back to our recipe here. What is looking good? I don't want to overcook the onion because we're going to add in with our sweet potato. So, one of the things I like about cooking as well is just the whole creativity process, transforming one thing uh, into another and just being aware of nutrition, the fuel that it's gonna give me. So on one hand, I wanna make it appetizing and really enjoy that meal. But on the other hand, equally, I wanna make sure that I'm getting um, as much of that nutrition that I can uh, while still enjoying it and getting the flavor. So we can cook our chicken in there. We don't need to do that just yet. We'll turn that pan off. We'll start to heat this up show you what I mean with our so that's still a little bit too firm see I want it to start to break down when I squeeze it so a few more minutes in there we'll turn that up to full Use a sieve, sieve, colander, again, depending on where you might have been raised or living, but we're gonna use that, drain the water out, add our yam, our cube jams, and kind of make these uh, almost like crisp uh, potato fritter kind of ordeal. Good. Like I said, we just want a, a light crisp. Move it around. Taste the garlic in that. Let's add a little bit more salt. I've had people question me about. Why do you use so much salt within your food? Well, first of all, I don't use that much salt. And secondly, salt is a really important micronutrient that we need um, for general health and well-being, but especially for weight, tra weight training. Sodium, the salt, we need that in our muscles to really force that contraction. So try adding a little bit more salt maybe than you would normally. Not a huge amount, an extra pinch or two within your pre-workout meal. Um, I like beef, brown rice, keep my vegetables pretty limited in that uh, kind of pre-workout meal, add a little bit more salt than I might normally, and then when I really get to kind of boosting the weights and feeling that contraction in the muscles, that's where I feel the benefit from uh, having the salt. I think we're good with our yams. So... Bring them over here. Yeah, you know what, James? Uh, Americans, which is where I am in America, Southern California, big portions, a lot of salt. You know, very different from eating out at a restaurant or getting your food and uh, preparing it and making it yourself. So it just comes back to that point about being aware of what you put in, how you're making it, how you season it. And uh, a couple of days or weeks of doing this, when you go out and eat food or other people have cooked and prepared for you, you really start to taste the difference in uh, not just the quality, but how they prepare. 
and how they also season it as well. Uh, it's a silicon lid, so we can put that around. I'm not going to be bothered by heat. Got a nice little cracker in there. We'll add our onions in in a second. Broccoli's looking good. A few more minutes in there. I'm going to give this pan a little rinse. Put this on medium heat. We're just basically reheating the chicken, getting all of the food to the temperature. Question about uh, someone hating olives and, and say tomato, tomato, tomato. Look, olives, good source of uh, omega-3 fats. So if you're not having those, um, avocado is another great source of that. Walnuts, you know, when we think of our macronutrients, they don't all have to be in the same thing. Beef, I'm going to have a higher fat content. So I may not be as um, liberal on adding extra fat from other food sources. But because I want to get a good 12 grams of fat, and that really comes from if I'm having five or six meals or combined meals like that throughout the day, my fat content, I want to be about 80 grams for the day. Protein, if I'm looking at 40%, is going to be about 240, 250 grams of protein and about the same for carbohydrates. I want to fuel my water with energy. If I'm starting to lean or cut down, I might begin to drop my carbohydrates down but not let my overall calories. So I'm gonna boost my fats, maybe boost my protein a little bit more. Otherwise I'm uh, restricting my body from total calories. Yeah, it's looking smelling good. Let's get our chicken in there. James, question about uh, cauliflower rice over standard rice. Uh, yeah, I have tried a couple of times. A little different, but the uh, it's a great substitution when I'm keeping my carbohydrates low, purely because we're looking at that 40, 50 gram amount of carbohydrates and eating two handfuls of yam and maybe even less for rice. I want to be able to eat and not feel too restricted. So... Uh, taking out my rice and adding cauliflower rice in, which has a much lower amount of carbohydrates for the same portion, meaning I can eat more without getting uh, without needing to add extra food in, missing out on cutting my rice. So let's just cut our avocado. Avocados, I typically have a quarter of it. An easy tip I found with the uh, avocado, just using a butter or a serving knife, not too sharp. Just slice it like that, and then you can use the back of that to peel away the skin. Again, presentation wise, it all makes that difference. 
turn our broccoli off. Get that out. Turn that up for a few more minutes. Turn our chicken over. I think that's about it. And you add the and chicken's already been cooked. I'm just sort of reheating it. So I can probably turn the heat right down or off that one. Shout out from France again. Start to set it all up. So, okay, let's try that again. We cut that from the live stream. The gals I've always been a fan of when it comes to vegetables. I don't count their nutrition. I don't include them unless they're a root vegetable like the potato. Um, anything dark, green, leafy, uh, or colorful, anything that you would typically deem as a vegetable, I let them in there for free. I keep an eye on my meat, my carbohydrates, and my fats, and vegetables add as much of that as I want. Even if they do have nutritional value, it's just not worth the hassle of sort of calculating it and including it. So, okay, that link is now off. Probably about 60 grams of carbohydrate there from those yam. I want to get about the same on the chicken. Just piece it up there. It doesn't always have to look too pretty. We'll switch it up a little bit after. This is the uh, the Instagram versus reality. This is the reality. I want my food to look good, but more importantly, I just want to eat it. I want it to taste good. It's about the same for uh, our chicken there. added fats, which we've probably got about, say under 10, eight here. Just slides right out. Take that little loose one away. Just kind of fan it out. More or less like so, but typically what I would eat on any given day, it's got all the basics in there. Protein from our chicken, between 45, 50 grams. Um, our sweet potato, packed full of flavor in there as well. This is delicious cold. I don't know how many of you only eat uh, heated food, cooked food. I would at nighttime. The next day, I probably got at least two, two and a half of these meals. I'll eat this cold the next day, I like it cold. The yam, if we would have taken out the onion, uh, we could add a little bit of uh, coconut oil in there. Uh, we can add a little bit of almond milk as well, maybe even a little bit of butter. I can't believe it's not butter. Whip that up, it's delicious, light, kind of creamy, sweet potato. Goes well with a whole bunch of different combinations. And uh, broccoli, I'm not gonna count any of the fiber from there, maybe six, eight grams. And then fats, we've probably got in co uh, combination with the chicken, 12, maybe 15 at most, but chicken. It's pretty lean, uh, not too much fat, about eight grams of fat per 100 grams. So 
if we've got 150 in there, we've got about 12 grams. So yeah, 15, 16 grams of fat altogether. Calorie wise, uh, I can't do the math off the top of my head, but maybe 400 grams, something like that. So keeping it pretty lean. But as far as hitting all of our numbers, our protein, carbohydrates, and fat, this is a pretty solid meal when it comes to achieving that. As you can see, uh, pretty easy to cook. You don't have to be a genius in the kitchen. I'm not, but we make it work. And it's easy to switch out foods. So we can switch out the chicken for fish, beef, eggs, a vegan choice. Basically, all of these are components that whilst they interact, some of the protein has fats, some of the car carbohydrates. Whilst it's got protein, it's very minimal. So I like to think of all of these as building blocks. And when it comes to my food, which of the building blocks can I interchange, take out, and switch up? All right, let's do a little final taste test and uh, we'll wrap up today's video. Uh, sauces as well. If you like all, what kind of condiments? You have ketchup on there and mustard. Look, all of those, providing that they have no high fructose corn syrup, which is kind of uh, gunk for our body. I tend to maybe a little bit of ketchup, organic ketchup on there, just to add a little bit of flavor, but that's also why we added that seasoning. We added some salt in there. I also don't want to get too hooked on always needing um, a sauce to maybe add more flavor. So should be flavorful enough. The chicken, the yam, the broccoli. Those yams. Winner. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, obviously, I'm gonna eat this now. But let me know your thoughts. We'll do some more of these kitchen live streams now that we've got this awesome setup and um, put some ideas out ahead of time. Maybe we'll focus on some breakfast type meals, um, some easy meal prep where we've got a couple of different options to be able to switch out from. Um, Post-workout, I asked uh, you guys to post some of the comments as well for uh, your post-workout. For me personally, I like to get fast-acting carbohydrates in. So white rice over brown rice, potatoes as well. Great to be able to absorb the uh, carbohydrates from that. Protein, look, eggs or egg white or fish, I find are the easiest to assimilate so our body can access the nutrients from them quicker than something like beef where it has to digest and break it down. So this might be a 250 gram serving of white fish. Combine that with some white rice or some white baked potato. Uh, Vegetables, I tend to keep that down, same as fats, I want the protein and the carbohydrates to be absorbed quickly into my body so that my muscles can make use of that energy for recovery. But yeah, like I said, thank you for watching. Be sure to check in next week, we'll do some more of these. I'm gonna be in the gym later, so more on my Instagram story, and I'm gonna dig into this. So uh, again, thanks for watching. Look after yourself, take care, see you soon. Bon appetit. Good.